Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Thursday. Or Friday Junior, as I like to say. <laughs> Everybody's doing good today. Hello, hello, hi. I like to see those faces. But if you are not able to do so, that is completely fine. Sandra, welcome, your first time. Miss Brittany, so glad to have y'all. Yes, so if you go ahead and put your name, your city, and roll in the chat for us, that would be helpful to Nathan and myself. we like to know who's in the room. Thank you, Miss Trisha, for letting us know. Appreciate that. We're so glad everybody is here. I know circumstances can be a little tough, but we're glad that everybody is here. Okay, so we see some, some Georgia folks. See some Ohio. All right. See. Some education specialists, some consultants. North Carolina. I was just down there about two weeks ago. New yeah. York. Hey. Toronto. Awesome. Awesome. So glad y'all are here. Some coaches. Lead teachers, thank you for being here. Some administrators, glad y'all are here. Those that can make those big decisions, directors, awesome. Thanks for sharing that with Nathan and me. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's good to see everybody. All right, and keep dropping those. We love to see who's here. Okay, so we are gonna keep it moving and get it started. So before we do that, we want to take a quick poll. So there's some questions that are gonna pop up on your screen. If you can answer those questions real quick for us, that it's helpful for Nathan and myself 
so that we can always make sure that we are um, connecting with you in the most um, specific ways to make your experience meaningful. So our first question is, have you attended any of our previous cohorts? So we, we do have um, past cohorts that we've had. Um, and even if you've attended a previous session, so this is our third session. So maybe you attended the first or the second. Um, and if not, please keep in mind that these are recorded sessions. So if you miss the first two, you can always go back, check your emails and have access to our recordings. Are you a Cox Campus member? And your roles. And then the last question is, have you completed the ecosystem course, which is um, aligned to this cohort? Once you're done, go ahead and exit out of that. All right. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Take it away, Nathan. <laughs> All right, I'm Nathan Thompson, and um, my core values are family, connection, and authenticity. I have four children. Um, my role is the Rollins Center for Language and Literacy Instructional Facilitator. So I work with Rollins and Cox Campus. Um, I am going on my 25th year as an educator, actually. I just realized that, that come next month, I'll be 25 years in education. Um, and the, in that role, I've been also... I've been a two-year-old teacher, a three-year-old teacher, um, after-school program, um, director, a coach, a curriculum specialist, and I always consider myself an activist. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us, Nathan. So I am Jennifer Jones. I am also a language and literacy instructional facilitator with Rollins. Um, I have been in the field of education, early childhood education specifically for um, coming up on 16 17 years um, in February, and I have been a pre-K teacher. I have been a mentor teacher. I've been a coach. Um, I've been a trainer and technical assistance specialist, and um, now in my role, I am a facilitator with Rollins. So um, my core values are family. I'm a boy mom. I have two, two boys, a 14-year-old and a nine-year-old. Um, also, integrity and discipline um, are my core values. I, uh, I'm originally from Louisiana, moved to Georgia almost three years ago, and I am enjoying my time here. And uh, I'm so glad to be on this journey with you all as you um, take on all of this um, ecosystem approach information to better improve your programs. So nice meeting everybody, and I hope that we grow and learn together for the rest of this school year. Okay, so we're going to jump into the Cox Campus way. So I did see in the chat that we do have some Cox Campus members. So thanks and kudos to y'all. So y'all are already taking advantage of our values. Um, so I'll share it for those that are not aware yet because they're not quite a member yet, but I hope that you do become one. Um, because there are five values to becoming a Cox Campus member. The first one is it's a rewarding experience for you. Once you join Cox Campus, you get the opportunity to um, uh, connect with several different um, educators, directors, owners, um, healthcare members, um, just a, a, a wide range of different um, people from different walks of life. Um, it's empowering. So uh, we do value all the work that you contribute to um, the growth and development of young children. It's connecting. So you do have a place where you can, you know, connect with your coworkers, people from all across the globe. Um, it's a safe space. So you can always feel comfortable when you are accessing any part of Cox campus. Um, you can find the answers that you need and, and apply them right away. And it's essential. So this information is very, very critical to um, language and literacy development for young children. And we always back everything up with the latest sciences. And so 
you can rest assured that the information that you are accessing on Cox is going to give you everything you need. You can feel confident when you're instructing or supporting teachers in whatever capacity it is um, that you do. So thank you. This is an opportunity here. So if you're new to Cox and you're not a member yet, this is your chance to take a quick two minutes to um, access coxcampus.org and sign up for free. Once you are um, a member, you have access to well over um, hundreds of different um, resources, um, courses, practices, information to, to help you and the families that you serve. And I put a register link in the in the chat there. All right. All right. So we can do that. Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome. All right. So icebreaker time. All right. So there's certain foods, like you see in this picture, that you think about when you think about Thanksgiving. And I know Thanksgiving's coming up. Some of us are gonna cook, some of us are gonna eat both. Maybe, maybe we go out to eat. But um when you think about Thanksgiving foods. What foods would you add to that menu of typical Thanksgiving foods? And what would you take away? Like, I don't even, I don't like turkey. Why would I eat turkey? Or um, I would really like to add, I don't know, uh, fried rice. <laughs> um, so I see in the in the chat, you can also unmute. I see ham, lasagna. I think these are added, right? Are we adding ham and lasagna? Add mac and cheese, yes. Take away the stuffing. I think I'm with Morgan on that one. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> big on stuffing. Oh man, I, I like I like dressing stuffing. Ooh, with, um, I never thought about that. Adding some fish to Thanksgiving. I oh, like yeah. fish. Sweet potato casserole is a favorite. Yes. Something vegan, maybe some. Amy, are you saying add? The asparagus and the broccoli together, or is that two separate dishes? It's an and or broccoli. <laughs> take away that. cranberry sauce. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make cranberry sauce. <laughs> I used to not like it though. I have to make it. Crawfish. Nice. Team no cranberry sauce. That's what it's looking like. No mushrooms, no mashed potatoes. <laughs> Thanksgiving pizza. Now I have done the next day making some like make nachos out of the turkey and everything. Like oh, Thanksgiving okay. nachos or Thanksgiving pizza. I've done that before. Well, we got some people that say they would keep cranberry sauce. Okay. Gotta have the cranberries. Yeah. Add ham and take away the turkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> greens. Mm -hmm. Take away the greens. Add some pasta. Okay. Jennifer and I were just at a at the NACI conference in Anaheim, and they had a, a ice cream place, and they had Thanksgiving flavored ice creams. Cocktails, uh, okay, Miss Trisha. <laughs> at cocktails. Nothing wrong with some cocktails. You're probably or not mocktails familiar. if you're not into drinking. Fried turkey. I saw a commercial that Arby's is doing fried turkey sandwiches. <laughs> oh wow! All right, we're gonna move on, but I see. A lot of stuff coming in the chat, so please feel free to add. Yes, we'll thank you thank all for participating with that. Cool. All right. So our objectives today, um, if you haven't joined us before, we review the last element we covered. Um, so we go over that first. So we're going to review the nine essential elements of an ecosystem. We'll reflect on and review that element two and our observations that we did, those who did them. If you didn't, just listen in. You can be a part of the conversation. And then an ele then we're going to introduce element three, discuss the look-fors, examples, and rating criteria. We're going to look at those videos and see how we would rate element three. And then we're going to practice setting goals and writing those action steps and get ready to observe uh, for the next month. So here are our norms for the meeting. We ask that everyone agree to these norms to be open-minded and flexible to change. Step up and step back, which means that, you know, be sure to 
say what you need to say in the chat or open up the open up uh, unmute your sound or in your group but also step back let others speak up as well so being mindful of that being present as much as possible with the um, with the chat is one way to be present, um, showing your face, talking, um, just really paying attention to what's going on and, and then interacting. So just being present as you possibly can. I know some of us are in different settings, so we understand that that might mean different things to different people. Um, respect opinions and communication styles. Listen to understand. And then we're going to commit to pause and reflect throughout. We try to take space to pause um, so that we, we realize that's important. So these are our norms. All right. And our purpose statement for this cohort, for this monthly cohort about the ecosystem elements, is to provide support for strengthening language-centered ecosystems at a larger scale so that all children have an opportunity to be a part of an effective ecosystem that is established in all nine essential elements. We want to build community among a diverse group of individuals working towards positive relationships and progress in child outcomes in language and literacy development. All right. So here, like Nathan said, we are going to talk about the nine ecosystem elements. And if you see here, this is our um, fan is what we call it. Um, and it's broken up into three different clusters. And so the first cluster is the climate cluster, which is the, the one that we're currently in. The next one that we'll be visiting um, after this element is content clusters. And then the last one is the connections clusters. So um, in the first climate cluster, you will have safe and responsive climate. So safe and responsive climate, this climate is all about the environment. So the focus is on practices that support children's social emotional needs while they're learning. So children at all ages must feel safe in order for them to learn and to thrive. So safety is very important and it's a way for children to express and accept themselves while they're learning. Um, the second element is culturally responsive and preserving environments. So we just um, talked about that element in our last month session. So this one is where we are promoting respect for all children, promoting diversity and, and helping children know that they are valued. Um, and so we want them to feel included while they're learning and value the, um, the other children and appreciate the differences between them and their friends and teachers in a classroom. Element three, this um, element is consistent routines, rituals, and transitions. So this is the particular one that we're talking about today in today's session. So this one supports um, children's social emotional development and their preparedness to learn through consistency and predictability throughout the day. So you're supporting, supporting children's emotional safety and their independence. The second um, cluster, content cluster, um, it's all about the practices and strategies that we have intentionally focused on promoting and developing language and literacy foundational skills. So with this one, you have children as conversational partners as element four. So this focuses on the support of language use for communication purposes, the development of their oral language, the development of vocabulary and comprehension, and it promotes some critical thinking and conversation during storybooks. Element five is integrated planning and teaching around an anchor book. So this practice is where you create opportunities for children to extend their learning outside of the book that is being focused on. You're gonna hear and practice vocabulary words deepen their comprehension and concepts um, development through storybooks and in other parts of instruction throughout the day. Element six, a part of content cluster is focused on emergent literacy. So this particular element here, we are still in the process of um, updating some new research information in, um, and we just launched a new course on Cox to focus on emergent literacy. And so please go and check that out as well. Um, this element focuses on building phonological awareness. This is where children are learning about concepts of print, alphabet knowledge, um, and learning how to write and, and to be, become better and stronger readers. 
The last cluster is connections cluster. So this cluster focuses on connection. So with individual children to assess their progress. We also consider dual language learners and the support that they need while they're learning and participating. This is also um, the last one with families, extending the learning beyond the classroom and, and how to keep that home and classroom connection throughout the, um, the school year. So this one has element seven, which is observation, progress monitoring. So this one allows children to progress and um, for teachers to keep track of their, their learning experiences and how they need to adjust and make some refinements in their teaching to help children meet the needs um, of development. Element eight is intentional supports for dual language learners. So this practice allows all the elements to come to life for your child um, that are developing in more than one language outside of English. So their learning experiences should be equitable for all, all of the, um, the children in this particular classroom. And the last one is strong partnerships with families. So this practice ensures that learning continues beyond the immediate classroom and that families are also active co-constructors of the ecosystem, which um, is all a part of this child's bubble of learning. Okay. And that's just an overview of all of the nine elements. And now Nathan will bring you into our expectations for this cohort. All right. So these are the expectations, um, basically what we do each month, what kind of what to expect in these meetings, in these sessions. So we're going to go over one essential element per month, talk about why each element is important, what each element looks like, and then we're going to do observations in each element and come up with action steps. So even though the beginning of it is covering the last element, our focus becomes, after we reflect on the last element, our main focus here is to go over the next one. So last month was two, we're going to reflect on that, and then we're going to get into element three for these um, expectations here. Okay, and if you have any questions about those expectations that Nathan just mentioned, please drop them in the chat, because like I said, we want to make sure that everybody is in the right place and they're getting what they need from this um, these sessions over the months. So just you know, feel free to drop any questions you might have about um, the expectations of the cohort. So this is a chance for us to pause and reflect. So we did talk about um, element two in the previous session. And so this is a time for you to take that information that you've um, gathered and now use it in your uh, breakout session to share with your, your group members. And so these are the questions that you're going to consider when you do go to your breakout. Um, there are three questions. The first one is, what did you notice that was culturally responsive and preserving in your observations? Were all children being represented in the classroom? And what are some things that are being done? Um, and then the last one is to share one or two action steps that you planned or you already planned to make for improvement. So those questions you're going to share your responses with your uh, breakout team members, and then we'll come back and share out if we have the time. But we do want you to pause and reflect with your um, group members at this time. So please be on the lookout for a, a breakout session group number to pop up on your screen, and Nathan and I will be visiting in to support. And I put the these questions in the chat so you'll have those. Thank you, Nathan. So you should see your group number pop up on the screen. Go ahead and join. And keep in mind, we're talking about element two from last session. I heard some good reflection in my groups. So did I, I. So did I. I was in group four for a while and I popped into group three for a second. I don't know if y'all saw me, but 
y'all were going at it, so I I left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I I didn't hear the the whole conversation, but I heard some some good good stuff going on. Good, good. Okay, and I I heard some good stuff in my group too. So they you know identified some um, concerns and they have some ideas on what they want to do next, and we were able to kind of support each other and share some ideas on helping new programs and um, and also um, how to encourage teachers to do um, more of the, the positive things that we want to see in the classrooms. And so good stuff, good stuff shared. Thank you all for sharing that with us. And one thing I was able to share out um, somebody was mentioning that they used that they saw our classroom, I mean our culture, family, culture and language survey on Cox okay. campus. Um, but then I was able to share about our classroom language plan. That is a good follow up to that, to take that information and use it for planning. Good, good. Yes, guys, please take advantage of everything that you are finding on Cox campus. You will not, um, not regret doing that. Okay, so we are now taking a look at our ecosystem construction measure. So this is a tool, it's a guide that we encourage everyone to download. So this link will be shared with you in the chat. Um, for those of you that have already attended our previous sessions, you should already have access to this. And so our first timers, please go ahead and click the link in the chat and download a copy of this so that you can um, keep up with us throughout the, the sessions. So like I said, this is a tool that's intended for some critical self-reflection and self-growth. It's for sites to use to support the implementation of better practices that lead to positive child outcomes, um, particularly with the focus on language and literacy development. Um, specifically, this tool, it serves as a guide to um, help facilitators like Nathan and myself, it um, helps instructional coaches, site directors, and other center staff to help monitor and assess where your site is um, developmentally as it aligns with our essential ecosystem elements. Um, let's see, what else? Um, there are different elements of this tool that Nathan and I will share with you throughout these sessions. And so we want you to ask questions um, and you know, just kind of play around with the tool and make it work for your site. So there are some different things that will be more helpful um, to different sites depending on what your need is. But um, this element here is it's a lengthy document. So when you make sure you kind of maybe print on both sides um, to kind of save some um, some ink. But this is um, very helpful. It's just a guide to kind of help you figure out and assess your classrooms and how they align with the, the nine elements that we are discussing, okay? This slide here shows you a closer look at our essential elements. So this document here is in the process of being updated. So we wanna make sure that it's aligned and um, um, aligned and connected to the new stuff that you guys are seeing on Cox. So this document here, it breaks down what each element is, what to look for. Um, it gives you some examples of videos in with the elements in action. And it also shares some um, additional resources that you can use to support you as you improve each of those nine elements. We did share that link with you in the chat. So you can also download a copy of that as well. Okay, any All questions right. about that, please oh. drop them in the chat. So Nathan is gonna bring us into today's element. All right, let's see. I saw someone said super resources, but the message went straight to me, which is cool. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know, <laughs> but awesome, thank you. All right, so element three, consistent routines, rituals, and transitions. I love this one because I feel like it, 
ties into a lot of what we do in the classroom. In order to have a safe and responsive climate, we need consistent routines, rituals, and transitions. But first, we need to be safe and responsive to the children, obviously. But you can really see how um, smooth the classroom goes and how responsive it is or chaotic it might be <laughs> sometimes. Um, I taught two-year-olds for years, so getting this down was so important to me. So I'll get right into our information around it on the next slide for our look-fors. Um, so what is it? The element looks for that evidence of established routines, comfortable, comforting <laughs> rituals, and well-planned transitions in the classroom. So routines are like arrival time, cleanup, nap time, um, diaper time, washing hands. Those rituals are things like starting each day with a welcoming greeting song, um, just making those moments really special and they deepen the connections, they create community and they build an inclusive culture of belonging. And then of course we have transitions. Those are those inevitable moments when children move from one activity to another, like from centers to small groups, outdoor play to lunch, there's a washing hands that goes in there somewhere. Um, and those should be rooted in care and connection and predictability. And so these practices all contribute to the children, to give the children a sense of security and stability. And so we look for um, learning opportunities as well throughout this, but just that safe and responsive and learning environment through all the routines and rituals and transitions. Why is that important? Well, consistent routines, rituals, and transitions provide a framework for those children's expectations throughout the day. This is, it reduces their anxiety because they know what's coming. So it helps to cut down on stress and anxiety, which can help to cut down on some of the behavior, <laughs> just having the children know what's, what's coming up next and they can focus on being challenged, supported, and connected. So learning takes place in the context of those responsive intera interactions where all routines and activities build and support language development throughout the day, every day. So we're looking for those routines, rituals, transitions to be consistent because it is necessary for all children and especially critical for those who have experienced or experienced a range of traumas and adverse childhood experiences. Um, so those nurturing relationships help develop children and fit, make them feel safe and explore and take risks. So we want, the, we want the environment to have expectations and feel safe and they know what's happening. All right, so let's take a look at a routine of the day. This is a teacher who is doing a diaper change. Hey, ready for our favorite? Skid a marinka dink a dink, skid a marinka dink. I love you. Skid a marinka dink a dink, skid a marinka dink. I love you. Now you already know that. I love you in the morning. I love you in the afternoon. I love you in the evening. And underneath the moon, so skid a marinka dink a dink, skid a marinka dink. I love you. How about that? All right. Oh, you do this with your infants. Oh, that's great. I love this video so much. Um, what you can put in the chat or you can unmute just a word or two of how that made you feel watching this. You loved it. I felt calm, yeah, relaxed, engaged, joy. Oh, I love it. Yes. I saw some people smiling, so it was touching them too. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. It was a very mm -hmm. cute video. And we mm -hmm. all should be saying too like that. Um, and I see some teachers saying that they do this too. So this is awesome. Good. Thank you for sharing out. All right, we're going to show you another video, and this hey. is um, a ritual. So this is our circle time. Tell Miss Evans something that you remember 
what was very exciting to you for today or something you learned new? Um, I learned... Well, you know, I remember you doing something, though, in the block area. You were doing some things, and I saw you with that thing. You pull it out like this, and then you put it down next to a block. What were you doing? I was measuring the block. So you measured something today, right? And when you measure something, what were you doing? You wanted to see how long it was. Oh, you wanted to see how long it was. Yeah. Everybody give Joseph a hip hip hooray. Hip hip, 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 hip hooray! hooray! All right, what did you notice was going on there? Oh, I see. Very important to speak with children about what they're thinking and feeling. Yes, great interaction. What do you think about this ritual? Good vocabulary. So yeah, there's some learning going on. Supporting support from the teacher, keeping Tell Miss Evans something. Yeah, the children seem really interested in what everyone's saying. And they're reflecting, celebrating. Yes. Hip hip hooray. Yes, I saw Miss Denise said supported with clues. So scaffolding your children, giving them hints on what they, because it's been a long day. They don't always remember every little thing that they did, but as teachers, it's our job to um, tune in, to notice what our children are doing. Hmm. Yes, Ms. Brittany. Yep, she tuned in. Pulling out language, pausing and letting them think. Awesome, guys. Yep, giving them hints and giving them a chance to speak. Yes. Great job noticing things, guys. Appreciate that. All right. So here, we're going to talk about some observations. So in observations, um, there are things that you need to look for, like Nathan said. So um, in our ecosystem construction measure, you'll notice on page 14, to be exact, um, for those of you who downloaded the, the document or those of you who brought your document back, if you refer to page 14, this, um, this particular side is a, it's a snippet from that document. And so it shows you what you should be looking for or noticing when you are observing in the classroom. And so you'll notice that at the top of this um, image, there are some numbers. And so the numbers range from one to three, with one being an emerging level, and then you have your midpoints at 1.5 and 2.5, um, two being developing and three established. So under each of those um, columns, you'll read descriptions on um, what it is that you're seeing in the classroom. And so you want to base what you see, what you hear in the classroom on um, what you see on this particular page in your ecosystem construction measure. So the look for is, as, as far as specific examples, you're going to use the closer look document to give you those details. But just to give you a generalized idea, you would use your ECM, particularly um, page 14 for consistent routines, rituals, and transitions element. Okay. And I just dropped a copy of that in the link of just that that one page. Yes. Thank you, Nathan. So you guys can click and access that as well. And we are going to go on to the another page that's in the ecosystem construction measure, which is an observation form. So this form, we have different samples of what type of form you would like to use when you are going in a classroom to observe. So you can choose either the one on page 40, 41, um, 42, 43. There's different forms that you can choose. All you need is one um, that you and your site, you know, with. And you want to write down your actual notes in these blank columns on your form. So, and then once you have inputted all of your notes, um, you'll determine based on the, the look for us, the things that you noticed and, and heard in the classroom, under the um, particular column. So if it's emerging, you had minimal things that you wanted to record because that's what you saw, then it will probably be in the one column. 
two, four, um, some evidence, and then three, if there's lots of evidence that you saw in this classroom, you would put it in the third column. Okay, so we will watch a short clip right here of um, a teacher talking to her children. So you're gonna watch this video, pay attention to certain things. We do have some questions that we want to um, have you guys uh, consider when you go to your breakouts. But before that, we want you to watch and kind of take some mental notes on what you're, you're noticing in this video because you will share your responses with your breakout group. Um, and the questions are right after this video. So let's take a look. London, what would you like to do? Hop like a rabbit. Hop like a rabbit? Okay, show me how a rabbit hops. Watch her feet. Hop, 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 hop. She's jumping just like a rabbit. Nice job, London. Michelle, what would you like to do? Hop. Okay, hop. She's going to hop, hop, hippity, hop. And look at her arms. See how she's moving her arms up and down, back and forth. What would you like to do, Walker? What would you like to do? Run. Can you run slowly? Very slowly. Show me how you run in slow motion. Look at that. <laughs> you see how he had his back hurt? Very good, Walker. What would you like to do, Charlie? Okay. Show me how you ribbit like a frog. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Do you see that? He's bending his legs and he's hopping. Okay, so that was a quick snippet of you to notice, tune in, paying attention specifically to what the teacher was doing and saying to get children to transition from one place to another. So she got them from the carpet into their centers. And so um, Nathan went ahead and dropped those questions. So if you want to take a screenshot of the, the slide with the questions, or if you want to um copy and paste them, however you want to use them, but you will need them to go to your breakouts. Um, Nathan and I will be kind of bouncing between groups um, to support, but we want you to reflect on that video as a group and then also using that criteria that we just talked about, where would you um, rate this particular teacher and justify your thoughts with your group? Okay, let's do it. And we have the video in the chat if you need it and the criteria again. Yes. Good conversations, you all. Everybody's back. Okay, good. Welcome back. Yep, so I heard some some really good justifications in my group. Um, they shared their um, findings, what they noticed, what was working, what was, um, you know, good. So we were kind of between a two, five and a three on our um, on our rating. Awesome. Well, um, Somebody wants to come off mute and maybe share, if if possible, about your um, breakout session. What did you learn? What did you share? Yeah, in our um, in a group one, we talked about the vocabulary that she used um, in describing their actions when transitioning. And it was really difficult for us. We wavered between a 2.5 and a 3. But if we were just going to rate her based off of that one piece that we saw, mm -hmm. we would have rated her a 3 because we didn't get an opportunity to see the whole day. Mm -hmm. And that one activity, everything was efficient and smooth and the children knew what to do. So you could tell they had done that transition previously. Right. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and that was pretty much what I was hearing in my group as well. Um, yeah. So it sounds like we're all on the same page. So good observations, everybody. Uh, 
And I just put in the chat the courses that are related to this element because there's not a course specifically on this, just around this element, but the power of language, talk with me, rhyme with me, meaning, meaningful conversations and connecting the dots for dual language learners are all courses that include aspects of um, rituals, routines, and transitions. And that's listed on the ECM itself on that page 14. Good, thanks Nathan for sharing that. Um, so you'll see now, so the next piece or part, I should say, after you've done your observations, you've had some time to reflect um, on the information, and now the last part of that um, process is to take action. So um, when you're taking action, you're you know developing a plan of steps. So you're identifying what that um, item is that I need to improve on. And then you're writing down some concrete action steps and um, determining who is responsible for completing those action steps and who needs to be in, involved um, in supporting that effort. Okay, so this slide here shows you some examples of action steps that you can include on your um, action plan. So some goals around that would be, I want to encourage my staff to take some Cox Campus courses. They need to take the related courses to this element. So that might be an action step that you might want to include on your um, teacher joint action plan. Um, another idea is I want to share a Cox Campus resource around this element with my teachers. Um, another one is implementing specific teaching practices. And so you can identify some of those by watching the courses or um, um, accessing some of the resources where we have like a particular um, Rollins strategy that you might want to include. Um, you might want to develop some common planning time. So this is some time for teachers to all come together and share ideas, work on plans together, um, share resources with each other. And then the last um, example is some self-reflection. So this is a chance for staff to observe their own classrooms. So they may set up um, a device where they can record themselves while they're you know, implementing a lesson or implementing um, a particular strategy, whatever it be. Um, or they may have a, a model classroom at their site. Where they can go to visit you know, a veteran teacher's classroom that's you know, things are working really well in this classroom. I would like for her to, you know, shadow or, you know, just spend a few minutes watching this teacher implement this strategy or idea during a particular time in the classroom. So these are all some action step examples that you might want to include when you are meeting with your teacher to create that plan. All right, so these were our objectives today. So just kind of want to go over, we did the ecosystem review, we looked, we reflected on element two, and then we went into element three and talked about that, did some videos, look for us. Um, I just want to pause for a second here and give you all some space to ask any questions because our next step is going to be, we're going to get into next steps, but one of them is going to be um, the main next step, which is for you to go observe. So you can observe a classroom. And if you're new, if you've done this before, you know the routine, but <laughs> routines. Um, but if you're new, I just want to explain that we're going to take this element three, take what we learned today, go observe a classroom or more than one classroom, whatever you have in your uh, capacity to do, and then come back and reflect on it. So that was that first part when we got into the the first breakout rooms was when we reflected on the last one. So next time we're going to reflect on element three and talk about how those consistent routines, rituals, and transitions went. What did we score? And then maybe what are some action steps? I know in the group I was in, they already started working on action steps. They were mm -hmm. giving out a survey, collecting the information, and started making changes. Somebody said that they were going to put the they had Spanish books in some room with children that didn't speak Spanish, so they moved them to the classroom where the children did speak Spanish, so they could have some uh, reflection. Not that you can't put, uh, we call them windows and mirrors, not that you can't put the windows 
but the mirrors are what's so important for that preservation and reflection of their own culture. So I like how they, they said, okay, we need some books for the children who speak another language here, um, whether it's Amharic or Russian or whatever language. And then um, those classrooms who have children who have Spanish, we're gonna need these books over here. So just moving around resources like that. And then we talked about tapping into family. So those were the steps that they were taking next. Um, and so that's another thing we're gonna talk about. So. Is there anything still lingering before we, about element three? Any questions or comments? All right, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so as I mentioned, <laughs> um, first, you know, make sure you take this course, the ecosystem course. If you haven't taken it, please take the course um, and look over it. If you're in the middle of it, try to complete it if you can in the next month. Uh, review the ECM 2.0 and a closer look document. Also want to remind you that this is going to be, this is recorded and it's going to be posted on Cox campus. So you'll be able to access that. Um, do those observations that I talked about and rate element three and check your email for any follow-ups. And you'll be joining us again, December 19th, hopefully. We look forward to it. Um, yeah, and share, share out. We'd love to invite more. Um, I invited one of my coaches today to come and she came. So it was good to see Miss Bree. <laughs> All right. And so please take our survey. Um, it's going to pop up on your screen. Just want to know how you feel. this session deepened your knowledge and how likely are you to try something new in your practice based on what you've learned on a scale of one to five one's the least and five is the most and we want to remind you all that this is a safe space so if you have any questions feel free to you know message us you can direct message us or you can you know come off mute share it with the group um, we want you to feel safe and comfortable asking questions because we want to see your, your programs improve. We want to, you know, make sure that we are meeting those positive child outcomes by the end of the school year. So we want you to make sure that you're getting what you need from these sessions. So to only help us improve them and, you know, get better and better as the year progresses. But if you have any questions on how to rate, when to rate, who to rate, um please ask um at this time because we do have a couple minutes you know that we can probably give back to everybody but before that we want to make sure that you know that you can take advantage of this time right now All right, well. Looks like we got everybody. Um, and we'll leave the poll up just a few seconds longer. We wanna make sure right. that everybody's had a chance, but we definitely wanna say thank you all for coming. We appreciate taking time. We know an hour and a half is like a full days of work um, mm -hmm. in a B to five setting. So we do appreciate you for coming and participating. We appreciate that and we, are eager to see everybody come back next month. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We're not going to see you again until December, but enjoy yeah. the time with your family, your friends. Enjoy your lasagna, Happy. lasagna and cranberry sauce or <laughs> ham. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Y'all have a good afternoon and we'll see, see you guys month. next time. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.